بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي آمين يا رب Today I want to talk about the link between taqwa and siyam or fasting in the month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا O you people who claim to believe Kutiba alaykum as Fasting has been written for you. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this word kitab, it comes in the meaning of fard. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum as or Allah says, Kutiba alaykum al-qital. Fighting has been prescribed for you. Or Allah says, Inna salata kana ala al-mu'minina kitabam mawquta. That the prayer times have been written down. There are many words Allah uses in Quran to say something is obligatory. Like Allah will say, Faridatan min Allah. It's a farida, a fart from Allah. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will simply give a command like aqimu salah establish the prayers. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use other words to show like innama that something is fard. But when the word kitab is used, it generally means that it is a fard that comes with conditions. It is not a fard in itself, meaning in order to do that fard, there have to be conditions meant to do that fard. This is a long conversation. I'm just simply introducing the terminology of Quran here. So, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you people who claim to believe, Kutiba alaykum as sayyam Sayyam, fasting, has been prescribed for you, made fard for you. It's written for you, it's like in the olden days, when the, sometimes the judges or the kings would write a hukum and then they would break the pen, meaning this cannot be changed. Or like nowadays, when the judge makes a hukum, he takes that, uh, the hammer thing that they have and boom, right? That's like, that's, uh, like that's it. There's no changing this, okay? So this is like, it's written, it's done. It cannot change, okay? And so, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as Fasting, sayyam, which is a... I will discuss this word if we have time. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum. Like it was prescribed for the people before you. It is worth noting and actually quite beautiful that the Qur'an makes a reference to the previous scriptures. The word fasting has been used in the Bible 80 times. 80 times. You may be surprised that Jesus talked about fasting twice a week. Like we have in Monday and Thursday. The Bible talks about fasting three days a month. Like we have on what? 15. The Bible talks about fasting three days a month. The Bible talks about fasting for a month. The Bible talks about when Musa went to the mountain to get Torah, he fasted for 40 days. So the subject of fasting is quite deep in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and in the Psalms, which is Zabur. Very interesting. It says the people that fast 
humble themselves and God will raise them. And the people who do not fast are arrogant and God will debase them. So statements like this you find across the Bible. One of the things that because of the biblical concept of fasting that has happened is the Christians have developed because who used to be famous for their fasting amongst the biblical uh, prophets? Daud And so the concept of intermittent fasting amongst Christians has recently become popular because of the verses of the Bible about David fasting. The Bible tells us that before any important jihad that used to take place, for example, the story of Talut, it says that before they went to jihad, they were fasting. Just like in Badr, it was also during Ramadan, but that came in different conditions. So, Ya Yuhalladina, now why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a reference to these scriptures? I want you to understand this in the context of the setting in which the revelation is coming to the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Prophet is in Medina. And who, are is the, who is the community that is watching the Prophet in Medina? Like a hawk. The Jews. They're waiting to see something that they can put their finger on and say, see, he does not fit our books. He's not a prophet. The prophet is right under the nose, the very people that can point out who is a false prophet. The people of the book. After all, they came to Medina knowing what? That what? A prophet will what? Come. So they were experts on the subject of what a prophet is. So when the Prophet comes to Medina and he starts praying and they see, oh, he prays according to our scripture. Because the scripture tells us the way Jesus prayed. How did Jesus pray? He fell on his face. face sujood. David fell on his face. Abraham fell on his face. They, if you watch a Jewish man pray, they also have qiyam. They also have raku. They also have sujood. So here, a man who's claiming to be a prophet and they're doubtful. Is he really a prophet? And then they see him pray. And they say, oh, he's praying like us. But he doesn't know our books. How is this so? And then they see him talking about fasting. How does he know about fasting? And his book is saying, Kutiba alaykum sayyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. Fasting has been prescribed like it has been prescribed before you with the people of the book. So the people of the book are dumbfounded. They have tested him over and over again. In the context of the revelation, this is important to know. Because when the Qur'an is specifically starting, the Madni Qur'an, the Qur'an revealed in Medina, the first surah in terms of sequence, the most important surah rather, you can even say, this is Surah Al-Bani Israel in a sense, which is Surah Al-Baqarah, because it talks about Bani Israel, because those are the immediate people dealing with the Prophet. And what does the Qur'an do in Surah Al-Baqarah? So one is what's happening in Medina. One is what's happening in this surah that is directly talking about the Jews in Medina, which is Surah Al-Baqarah. First thing after Allah says, you guys are disposed from your position. The first thing Allah describes is the prayer. That the Qibla has been changed. سَيَقُولُ السُّفَهَاءُ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَا وَاللَّهُمْ أَنْ قِبْلَتْهُمُ الَّتِي كَانُوا عَلَيْهَا قُلِ اللَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبُ فَأَيْنَ مَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ etc. The Qibla has now been changed because the prayer comes first and so the prayer was established. The second hukam in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah when the Prophet is in Medina is the fasting. So there is a, you can say, similar to the narration of the five pillars of Islam. <coughs> the very next one, the next very command after fasting is jihad. The very next command is hajj. So you can see the, uh, you can say the tartib. Anyway, 
So, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you people who claim to believe, Kutiba alaykum as siyam it has been written for you, Kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, like it was written for the people before. What? Why is fasting prescribed? Now this is the subject I really want to talk about. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you will have taqwa. Now in this surah itself, there is a sequence that is very interesting. Each ayah ends in a very interesting way. The first ayah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Then the next ayah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ and the third ayah says, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ There's a taqtib that's very interesting. I'm only pointing it out. But today I want to just talk about the taqwa part. So Allah prescribed fasting, so you will have taqwa. Taqwa is a very, very important subject. Umar radiallahu an asked Ubay ibn Ka'ab, who was a scholar of Qur'an in the time of the Prophet wasallam. What is taqwa? Ubay ibn Ka'ab asked Umar bin Khattab the question that have you ever been through a street or through a place where there are a lot of thorny bushes? He said, yes. He said, how did you go through the thorny place where there's a lot of thorny bushes? He said, I managed my clothes so that the thorn will not prick me as I'm moving along. He said, this is taqwa. This is the meaning of taqwa. To move in a way that you're protecting yourself. So taqwa is a self-awareness. Taqwa is what? Awareness of yourself and what you're doing. Taqwa comes with awareness of what you are doing. How you're managing yourself. How you're managing your actions and your thoughts and your emotions. Managing yourself. How are you managing, managing yourself? To protect yourself from things that may be harmful to you. So, <clears throat> over here I want to introduce to you some aspects of taqwa. And we will see how this relates to fasting. Because after all, fasting and taqwa must have a relationship. Because Allah is saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you people who claim to be, believe, Kutiba alaykum as Fasting has been prescribed for you like it was prescribed for the people before so that perhaps and when a king says perhaps he means for sure perhaps you will attain taqwa perhaps you will have taqwa there are two parts to this that I want to introduce you to the first is what is the first thing out of all the parts of your body, yourself, as you're managing yourself, what's the first thing you should have taqwa with? It is your ears. What are you listening to? You may recall the narration Sheikh Tamer read about backbiting. The most, and taqwa has three, you can say, pillars itself. One is the fear of Allah. Second is the love of Allah. And the third is hope in Allah. This is a qawl of a tabi'i. But the reason I mention this is that what can you do with your ears to prevent harm to yourself? And what can you do with your ears that will bring good to you? So Shah Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن the month of Ramadan is the month in which Allah has revealed the Qur'an. So what can you do that's good with your ears is to listen to Qur'an. What you listen to, and they say out of all the organs of the body, the thing that is closest to the heart is the ears. It's like what you put into your heart, what you fill your jug with. It's the ears, right? The eyes, they see out. The eyes are output. But the ears are input. What are you putting inside yourself? So they say out of all the organs of the body, the thing that you need to be most careful about is what's going inside. So the first thing to have taqwa, both in terms of fear of protecting yourself as well as love, has to do with the ears. 
So what you're listening to specifically in the month of Ramadan is extremely important. Who you're listening to is extremely important. What you're listening to, are you listening to Quran or are you listening to something else? This will have a huge impact on your level of taqwa, your level of being aware of yourself. Because when you're listening to the wrong things, it makes you unaware of yourself. You're not aware of yourself. And when you listen to good things, you become aware of yourself. You become cognizant and mindful of yourself, your emotions, your thoughts, your actions, because you're listening to, when you're with good people, you want to act good. You become more mindful. When you're with bad people, with bad friends, then you act like however you want to and you're not so mindful. So you lose taqwa when you're with the wrong people. And over here, I want to mention, there are three ways to attain iman. Or three ways to attain taqwa, sorry. One, kunu ma'as sadiqi. Be with the righteous people. And when you're with the righteous people, you'll hear the good things. You'll hear the things when you see them being serious and when you see them being mindful of what they're doing, you'll become mindful of what you're doing. But if you're with people who are not mindful of what they're doing, and they just say whatever they want and they do whatever they, you know, they're not mindful of what they're doing, they're just in a state of fujur, following their impulses, their immediate impulses. So what fasting does is it breaks your immediate impulses. I'll talk about this later. But the first thing you must be mindful is what goes into your ears. And for that you must have good friends. For that you must have a good environment. If you don't have good ears, if good is not coming into your ears, you're lost to begin with. Completely lost. So, the first thing is kunu sadiqin. Be with the righteous people. The second thing that creates self-awareness and a state of taqwa is the sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ. Because when you're following the sunnah of the Prophet, you become aware of yourself. Am I wearing this according to the sunnah? Am I entering the house according to the sunnah? Am I going into the bathroom according to the sunnah? It's not just that you're doing du'as. Of course, that's all great. But the, the bigger aspect is you become really sensitive to yourself and your, your, your self-conscious, self-awareness, not of your impulses because you're working against your impulses, but you become aware of your inner self, your real self, right? You become cognizant of yourself. And I'll leave it at this for now. Being with the righteous people. And number two, following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because that gives you a measurement. Are you on the right track? or the, You become aware of yourself. Because you start measuring yourself to other, something other than yourself. Which is the sunnah of the Prophet. The second thing, your eyes. What are you looking at? The eyes are also input and output. Are you looking at good things? Are you looking at bad things? Shaulila Muhaddas Dil Birahmatullah He says there are four things that when you look at it, it immediately reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Four things. If you look at it, it reminds you of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first is the Quran. What are you looking at? Then he said, the masjid, where are you? Where are you looking? Oh, you're looking inside the masjid, right? The third he said, the third and the fourth, I forget right now. So we'll continue, inshallah. He said four things that remind you immediately of Allah. One is the book of Allah. One is a masjid. Huh? I don't remember right now. I don't remember three and four, but he wrote four. Okay, so what you're looking at and what you're listening to, very important, especially in the month of what? Ramadan. When Maryam came with the child, 
What did she say? She said, I'm fasting and therefore I'm not going to talk. Because in the olden days when they used to fast, they used to not talk. I will not t talk to any human beings today. So, who you're listening to, what you're listening to, what you're looking at, in addition to the fact you're not eating food, is primary. To have taqwa. Otherwise, we have the fear that we'll fall into that statement of the Prophet, come min sa'imin. How many people they fast? They get nothing from their fast in la jua, except for hunger. And how many people they stand at night? They get nothing from their prayers except they get in la sah. They get uh, you know uh, uh, just awake a state of wakefulness, tired. Okay. So first thing is the eye, the ears. That's the most important. And second most important is what you're looking at. Now the ears have mostly to do with what? The ears mostly have to do with human beings. And looking has mostly to do in our times with technology. What are you looking at? How much time are you spending on looking at YouTube videos or movies or whatever and listening especially to good people, listening to Quran? Okay, not listening to backbiting, not listening to negative things, not being with people that are negative. And then the third thing you must protect is your tongue. One of the great scholars of Islam, Hazrat Ali Wasif Ali Rahmatullah, he said that if you don't listen to haram for 40 days, then Allah will open your heart to the truth. And if you don't look at haram for 40 days, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a tenderness in your prayer, coolness in your prayer. And if you don't speak haram for 40 days, then after 40 days, if you even say something by mistake, Allah will make it come true. So, having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you people who believe, kutiba alaykum as-sayyam, fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for the people before. La'allakum tattaqun, so you will have taqwa. Why do you need taqwa? Now this is the second, and I'll try to wrap up this up very quickly, so you can understand the program of Ramadan from the philosophical basis of understanding Qur'an. Allah wants you to fast, so you have taqwa. When you're fasting, you become more self-aware. Oh, I can't eat, I can't drink, I can't do this, I should not be doing this. Oh, I have to go to my trawi prayers. Oh, I have to, do, I have to be with the good people, etc. Et you become more aware. You also become more aware because there's less waswasa of shayateen. There's more ilham, you can say, from the malaika, the good things. The voices of good increase and the, the, the whispers of shayateen decrease. Now in that state, you get the training. Taqwa is the result of fasting. You become more self-aware. When you become more, that is the currency you need to do what? Taqwa is not just the result, it is the means by which you achieve something more important. And that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ذَلِكَ kitab. This is the book, meaning the Quran. La rayba fihi. There's no doubt about this, this is the book. Especially Allah is saying this to who? To the Jews of Medina. It is guidance for people who have what? Taqwa. So Quran is guidance for people who have what? Taqwa. So in the date, the month of Ramadan is the month of what? Quran. Shahr Ramadan. 
الذي أنزل فيه القرآن شهر رمضان the month of Ramadan is the month in which Allah revealed the Quran so the month of Ramadan is for Quran Laylatul Qadr is the day the Quran came to the heart of the Prophet but how can I have access to Quran unless I have the currency called Taqwa because Quran is guidance for people who have what? Taqwa so to give you the guy, the currency you need to have taqwa. So if you're reading Quran, you can act upon it. If you're reading Quran, you're away from your impulses. You're more self-aware. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the daytime makes us fast. So you become more self-aware throughout the day. And then after you break your fast, now you have some taqwa. You smiled when you break your iftar. I will also mention something interesting about fasting. No other worship is taught in the Quran from beginning to end with all of its ruling, its wisdom, its beginning, its ending, its conditions, its rukhsas. This makes it easy. There's no ibadah that Allah starts from beginning to end explaining the whole subject. Not for prayer, not for hajj. Not for jihad. No ibadah is explained in Quran. The entire Quran except one ibadah. And that is the ibadah of sayyam, the fasting. Ana ajzibihi. I am its reward, the Prophet said. Allah said, I am the reward. Allah loves fasting so much that it's the only ibadah Allah describes in detail that you will fast till the time of when you see the white thread from the black thread. And what is the purpose of Ramadan? It is the month of Quran. And if you're traveling or if you're sick, you can then change it to other days. And all the way till Eid, لِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ So you will do takbir for Allah. Allah has guided you on the day of Eid. From beginning to end, Allah has described the entire ibadah of fasting. That's how much Allah loves this. Right? It's like no other ibadah. Allah didn't describe salah in Quran. So, what am I trying to say? Allah, you fast in the daytime to become so, more self-aware. Self-awareness and staying away from your impulses leads to taqwa. Now that you have this currency throughout the one day fasting in the daytime, that's the daytime program. The daytime program is get taqwa. The nighttime program is, okay, now that you got some taqwa, now you stand up at night. And you read what? Quran. Now Quran will impact you according to how good your fasting was. If in the daytime your fasting was, let's say the, the type of fasting where you just only were following the ritualistic rules of not eating and not drinking, but you were listening to all the wrong things and you were doing all the wrong things and you weren't trying to be better, then your nighttime will be like that. But if in the daytime you try to do your best, and then at nighttime the Quran will have a strong impact upon you because you gained some taqwa. And taqwa is the precondition to getting access. لا يمسو إلا المطهرون. No one can touch the Quran except to those who purify themselves. So the more you purified yourself during the daytime, that's how much access you'll get to the Quran. I'll end with this because time is running out. Some statements of the Prophet in which the Prophet brings these two things together. Sayyam, which I haven't talked about fasting, the word sayyam. But the shari meaning, the simple one is imsak, keeping yourself restrained. That's the meaning of taqwa too, keeping yourself restrained by the process of self-awareness. So the Prophet said, As-sayyamu wal-Qur'anu yashfa'an. Sayyam, fasting and Qur'an will intercede for you on the Day of Judgment. So there is a link between taqwa and fasting. And there's a link between fasting and Qur'an. The daytime program and the nighttime program. Right? And it is really very miraculous. Now, the Prophet said, وسلم, Right? Man sama imanan wa ihtisaban Whoever fasts. With iman and hisab, meaning being cautious, taking his hisab. Whoever with fast with iman and cautiousness, man sama imanan wa man man sama imanan wa hisaban. 
His sins past will all be forgiven. And then the Prophet continues, وَمَنْ قَامَ بِهِ And whoever stands its nights. In what? Whoever what? Stands its nights. مَنْ قَامَ بِهِ إِمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرُ And then his sins will be forgiven. This is why Taraweeh is called Taraweeh. Because the hadith of the Prophet and the actions of the Prophet show mushaqqa. They show difficulty. Standing up all night is not easy. But Taraweeh is what? Raha means to make easy. Tarawi means to make it easy. Allah made something e the, pro the Umar bin Khattab started this, a program to make it easy to finish parts of the Quran. Anyway, so fasting and then standing up at night. Fasting and its relationship to understanding the Quran. Fasting and thinking deeply about Quran and its meaning and its content. And so, therefore, when you're doing Tarawi prayers, you know, it would be beneficial to know what is being read. Some words, in Allah Ghafoor Rahim, or whenever the word Allah is mentioned, whatever Arabic words you know, make your, word, your ears even more attuned to them. When some names, even basic things, like when the names of certain prophets are mentioned in the Quran, you know what's being mentioned. When the names of Allah are mentioned, you know what's being mentioned. When certain words are mentioned, you تُفْلِحُونَ For example, or some basic stuff. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Okay, so this process of fasting during the day, getting some taqwa, and then spending that time to understand, and more than understand, more important is to imbue yourself, to absorb this Qur'an, absorb the vibrations, absorb that goodness into yourself so aqul qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimina wal muslimat astaghfirullah astaghfirullah allahumma salli wa sallim ala muhammad wa ala